Miles Davis was a great poet on his instrument. His horn could blow warm, round notes that spoke to the deepest human emotions, and it could spit out cracked trills that evoked the angry sounds of bullets firing. Sometimes his trumpet seemed to float over and through remarkably complex rhythms and time signatures with heart-stopping speed and efficiency. His sound could penetrate like a sharp knife. It could also be muted, tender and low like a lullaby, but it was always charged with deeply felt emotion. Miles' sound always made us sit up and take notice. It was burnished, brooding, unforgettable. When you heard Miles on the radio, you knew right away that it was him. You knew it by the sound, because no one else ever sounded like that. Like Louis Armstrong's, Duke Ellington's, Thelonious Monk's, John Coltrane's, his voice was unmistakably unique. Sometimes when he used the mute, whether on up-tempo tunes or slow ones, we knew we were hearing perfection. When he played muted ballads, it was as if he were tenderly kissing our feelings. Then he would stun us with bright, rapid-fire bursts of notes that penetrated our souls. Miles not only soliloquized, he also had a dialoguing style. It was like listening to him having a conversation with himself with one of his voices imitating a fast-talking, sweet-rapping black street hustler. Even when he was first starting out, Miles' sound and style got your attention immediately, because you knew whatever he played, it was going to be unusual. His music was always unusual, because that's the way his mind worked, unusually. Miles Davis was always unusual. He didn't get that way just after he became famous. He was special from the beginning. His homeboys back in East St. Louis understood that. They knew he was odd, a little bit different from them and everyone else. They didn't mind his eccentricities. They gave him the space to be different all his life but only as long as he didn't step over the invisible line that both he and they knew was there. Miles seldom crossed that line to diss them, because if he had, those homeboys would have made him pay. They weren't no, uh, poot butts. Miles knew, too, that they understood him in the way that homeboys always understood the one among them who is different. Odd, a genius, someone who sees things they never see. Hear sounds they never hear. Voices. The screech of car tires. Maybe a mockingbird riffing on another bird's song. The lovely voice of an old black churchwoman singing plaintively in the dusky glow of a backwater country evening. Somewhere few came to. Save mosquitoes or rats or evil white men dressed in bedsheets carrying guns and flaming crosses. In the night air, the trains never seemed to stop whistling past their wheels humming. The roads were unpaved, empty, eerie in the twilight just before the haunts came out to enter everybody's imagination and shut down those dusty roads. The voice of the old black woman floats above the shadows and trees, disembodied, yet whole. It rides up there and cruises along the night birds circling above some unseen church or log cabin in some out-of-the-way location back in the bushes, hidden. The voice also circles, plaintive, haunting, achingly real. And if you had the privilege of hearing that voice, perhaps you wouldn't file it away as anything special, something to imitate and relate to for the rest of your life, a reference point for your own life's experiences, making you sensitive, alert, cognizant of other beautiful, necessary things. But that's the way Miles heard it. Perhaps the voice would remind you of a lonely trumpet sound, 
But maybe you wouldn't know that what you heard was special, because you couldn't see that old black woman's face. And if you could have met her, you might have been too busy watching her chaw on some snuff to see the wisdom in her old eyes. But Miles did see that face, saw it when he heard her voice. He saw the whole scene, took it all in, knew that it was real and special and filed it away for later use. From the giddy-up, Miles' friends knew he saw and heard things they could never see or hear.